The current Minecraft snapshots are giving us a glimpse into what mechanics will be added in the 1.17 Caves and Cliffs update. And we've already seen a lot of really awesome mechanics that have been added, and I, for one, am super excited to see the additional updates that will be added as a part of this overworld overhaul. And today I want to explore the concept of turning a skeleton farm into a stray farm. And that makes use of a couple of mechanics that we've already seen. Now there are already a couple of concepts of these stray farms floating around, but I hope that by the end of today's episode, you will see why I believe that the design that I have come up with is indeed the best option. But before we do that, we need to take some time to understand exactly why these mechanics work in the way that they do. So for that, let's head over here to a couple of testing facilities that I have set up. Now the first question we needed to ask ourselves is, does powdered snow freeze water source blocks? And I have this little area set up and it does not appear to do so, but we are currently in the middle of a desert biome. So to further that test, I've come over here to this savanna biome that's right here and set up a similar testing station. It's within a loaded chunk near where we've been and this has not converted over to an ice block. So we do not need to worry about the powdered snow converting any of our water source blocks into ice. And that is a very important component that I'm glad is not something that's been added. And please, Mojang, if you're listening, do not make powdered snow freeze water source blocks. The next question we needed to answer is how long does it take for a skeleton that has been exposed to powdered snow to become converted into a stray? And you will see a timer on the screen to give you an idea of how long this process takes and so you can better gauge exactly what's going on here. Now, it does not matter which section of the skeleton is exposed to powdered snow. It can be his bottom half, his top half, or his entire body. It does not make a difference one way or the other. And it's not random. It is a specific increment of time that has to pass. But the interesting item is, is it's not just the exposure to the powder snow that will convert the skeleton over to a stray. We should be seeing the transformation take place and finalize in the next couple of seconds here. And just like that, we have our stray after that 45 second interval. After that point, the stray can be removed or the skeleton can be removed from the powdered source. And you don't have to worry about him converting back as they do not regress to the skeleton format, at least not that we're currently aware of. And why would you want them to? Is the strays are an excellent source of getting some arrows of slowness without having to craft up the potions and then sacrificing them. Is <laughs> That's just a lot more work than is needed. But something interesting happens when we try this exact same test in a different setup. So again, you're going to see that exact same timer taking place as this skeleton slowly moves down through this column, which is accomplished by the use of some cobwebs and some powdered snow as well. As the skeleton makes their way through the powdered snow and the cobwebs, you will notice that it's not exactly the exposure to the powdered snow that causes the stray to make the change. As here in a moment, the skeleton is going to be completely free of the powdered snow and not in any way, shape, or form connected to it, yet you will still notice that the skeleton changes over to a stray. Before it even hits the ground here, it makes that switch. It's also important to note that if the skeleton makes that change while they are in the air, they will stall briefly uh, before that conversion fully takes place. Now, the reason that this happens to the skeletons has to do with the effect that is applied to entities when standing in powdered snow. And there is this kind of freeze or frostbite effect that you'll see that slowly encompasses the player and the player's field of view. Prolonged exposure to this effect will eventually start to deal damage. And that does include to the strays themselves. If they linger in that powdered snow, they will eventually start taking damage from the effect. Now for players, this effect can be countered by wearing any piece of leather armor 
And as an added benefit, if you happen to choose boots, you will also not fall through the powdered snow when you stand on top of it. As you notice, as soon as I take those leather boots off, I sink through and that effect starts to come back. So what I have determined is, as you can see, as you leave the powdered snow, the effect does not immediately leave. However, it does linger for some time as your character or the entity warms back up. And that's what's happening here with this stray, is as the stray is falling through, and once they are free of the powdered snow, they are still suffering from that effect. And as the effect fades out, they meet that 45 a second requirement and that allows them to become converted to a stray. Now for the next bit of testing, I have this tower set up. And the reason that this tower is color coded kind of funny is it allows you to know exactly how high a skeleton needs to fall in order to be within that one hit marker. And you probably already know how high that is, but in case you forgot, this is marked out with the red blocks in increments of five. So simple counting gives us five, 10, 15, 20, one, two, and three. So from a 23 block height, you can push a skeleton off a ledge or a skeleton can fall and be within one hit of dying. And that is important for the overall setup. So we could then run a confirmation test by pushing this skeleton off of an elevated platform, ha having them go through the exact same system that we used for this stray down here. And as you will note, as the skeleton slides down through these blocks, he will eventually get to the point where he is no longer exposed to the powder snow, but still makes the conversion before becoming free of this cobweb and dropping down to the ground to be in that one hit kill range. It is a little bit slow. This was merely the testing factor that I had for this, and I have made a couple of alterations, which we will get to, I promise. It's just very important that we understand the mechanics of how this works. And just like that, we have the skeleton converted to a stray just as they come free of the cobweb and they will fall down to the ground here and sustain the same amount of fall damage as the other skeleton, now being a one hit kill. Also, the use of this tinted glass makes things very convenient for testing things out in the open <laughs> for these research purposes. Now, a very important question to ask is, does this effect still apply to skeletons wearing leather boots? And if the skeleton is wearing leather boots, they will not fall down through the powder snow. So we also have to take into account that there needs to be a workaround for that. However, if the skeleton is wearing any other component of leather armor, they will still be subject to the chill effect. Even though the player would not be, this does not apply to the skeleton. And as you'll see as I fast forward the footage here, as the skeleton makes its way down to the bottom of this area, they still are converted to a stray. And as promised, that skeleton, even though it was wearing leather armor, still becomes converted to a stray. The final question that we need to ask is in relation to some hard mode or hardcore mode items. And that is the fact that skeletons can spawn with different pieces of armor equipped, which as you can see here, we have at least one skeleton wearing gold armor. Now, these guys are all going to make their way down through these blocks, and the question that we are looking to determine here is, does a skeleton wearing any sort of armor still convert over to a stray? And that is important to ask, because as strays spawn in the wild, at least as far as I'm aware, they do not have any armor that, uh, or at least I've never come across a stray, that's wearing any part of armor. But as you'll see here, as these skeletons continue to make their way down through the powdered snow, every single one of them does indeed make that conversion over to a stray. And this is just kind of a fun effect to A, listen to as they convert, and B, to see as they make their way down to the ground as the entity cramming damage rule causes them to burst out all over the place. And as you can tell from down here, this skeleton in the gold armor does still make the conversion over to a stray. So now that you know the ins and outs as to how and why this works, we can now have a look at the actual farm setup. 
And for that, I'm going to transition over to spectate mode, at least initially to get down to where this farm is located. Now, if you weren't aware and you wanted to dabble around with this, but you don't necessarily want to go and find a skeleton spawner, the good news is, is in creative mode, you can change any kind of spawner to the spawner of your desire by clicking a spawn egg or right clicking a spawn egg onto the spawner. This was originally a zombie spawner that when I found it, but upon using that method, we were able to create a skeleton spawner for the purposes of this experiment. So let's come back into a creative mode so you will see that these skeletons do indeed start to spawn just based off of our proximity. This setup is fairly standard with the water flushing system bringing the skeletons down here to the bottom and then over to a bubble column that will rise them up into the conversion chamber which we will monitor in real time now that we have some skeletons that have come out of this spawner. So as you'll see here, we have our standard bubble column. These skeletons will slowly make their way up to the top. And once they are here, you'll notice that there are a couple of blocks of powdered snow on top of the water column. As they make their way through, they will be exposed to that powdered snow in the exact increments that are needed. So you'll see here that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas that the powdered snow is at the top of this water line in the addition to another three blocks of the powdered snow here in this area. And just as before, they gain the stray status as they make their way down to the bottom chamber, which makes them ripe and ready to be picked off. Now, you'll notice that there was one other item that I did not mention or explain, and that is this soul fire that is present here as well. This is accomplished just by having a piece of soul sand or soul soil and lighting it on fire. I personally prefer the soul sand for this reason because it helps keep the skeleton a little bit more in place. The reason that you would need that type of mechanic is just for this reason, as in a hard or hardcore setting, you can have skeletons with these different armors that spawn as we just are seeing with this full leather armor skeleton. And as this skeleton in the leather armor makes their way through the system, they will still have that effect applied to them because the leather armor does not make them immune to it. But because of the leather boots, they do not sink down through the powdered snow that's needed to get them to the killing chamber. So this setup will allow us to kill off any skeletons that would otherwise clog up the system up here if they do not drop down through the powdered snow and become converted into a stray. And then again, by the time they make their way down here to this final chamber, they are a one hit kill with any sword really. But if you want to make the most of this farm, you're going to want to make sure that you have a sword that has sweeping edge, looting three, and smite just for good measure. And as you can see, you're already going to get large amounts of the slowness arrows in addition to all of the other standard drops that come out of a farm of this caliber. So now you understand why this farm works as well as how to set it up for yourself in your own survival worlds. Go ahead and feel free to test this see if these mechanics work for you. And if you have any revisions to this design, be sure to let me know in the comments down below as I am open to ways that this can be made better. Until then, thanks again for watching. If you learned something, leave a like on today's video and subscribe for daily variety content. With all that being said, thanks again for your time and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.